we all know that with the growing population in the country uh, the need for space is increasing at a very very fast rate uh, i would like to direct this question to both uh, professor mahanama and professor shidani uh, first of all professor mahanama what is your point of view on this thank you uh, i think uh, as you said the population uh, i mean it is uh, <clears throat> normal natural phenomena i mean the population is growing but uh, my my personal understanding is uh, we need a lot of people in the i mean population not an issue for a country if you are if you are really managing now uh, i so i'm why i'm giving the example because uh, the population is strength of a country you know so it's a kind of uh, in terms of uh, nation so need that only thing uh, we are not properly managing it in a, you know proper way putting them on the space so our argument is that uh, we should have we are all the estimates uh, although we see the population growing but uh, you know 2025 i mean very soon, soon there was estimate our population is growing at a declining rate there's a point that we are getting at a zero growth you know that indicates the natural growth is not taking much very much because there's a uh, you know not having new babies born in the future maybe by 2025 they estimated maybe coming up to zero level you know zero growth rate so numbers increase absolute numbers but the rate wise is there's a declining city population also decline in terms of the location and the size of the cities but i think uh, all of uh, you understand now uh, due to pandemic situation uh, we all know that the the more open environment is the good area for people to live rather than in a compartment building inside you know all the time doctors are advising keep your open your doors and keep open you know ventilated environment is very important so i think uh, take into that account uh, we have to have a different kind of uh, planning housing or whatever development but it should be uh, not spreading all over the place it should be in a city small areas you know like uh, rather than spreading all over the places you can develop cities uh, in a identified location where you don't get this uh, interaction with, you know conflict with the other elements you can develop in a proper location and what what we need we need we need to reduce the mobility to but we all the time advocate people to have everything in close proximity where you can walk rather than traveling long distance and then you can then you don't want to you know emit a lot of uh, gases and can the environment clean and even good for people to get their services so therefore in the future there should be a town center small towns that are connected to each other and uh, not spreading all the places and identify small you know various uh, you we don't have much industrial uh, you know towns in the in the in the our country now the industries uh, we are actually uh, having kind of industries not that uh, polluted type industry but uh, i think uh, nationally we have to identify where the heavy industries type should go you know take example uh, hambantota port is there i think that port is the area is actually good for industry rather than human settlement because housing if you put housing people live there then you need water other facilities is not easily provide because you know you need water without water you cannot live there so therefore industries can go there still other areas can be developed where the people can get basic infrastructure so only thing that there should be kind of a sustainable and you know kind of green type of uh, uh, cities uh, in not in a everywhere but identified location so that is the planning concept in this that should be in the future to address this uh, pandemic type you know this one pandemic we don't know what will come next time it's very serious you go if you have crowded space sometimes it's a problem so how do uh, take it to count that say one tower if you put everybody in one tower that will have become an issue so these are very challenging uh, you know architects has to understand how do you put their building construction building keep more ventilation uh, and uh, 
keeping a lot of open areas and green areas, vegetation, everything is must be uh, uh, planned according. Otherwise, uh, we'll have a big issue in the future to manage, you know, this type of situation. You can understand Colombo is the biggest, uh, you know, what is the large vulnerable area for pandemic. Rather than rule, if you go to 30 kilometer away from Colombo, people are actually free living, no problem, because they actually have a lot of open space, open area. When you come to closer city center, Colombo, where are some areas like Batakulia, you know, that area, and uh, Kotahena, they are crowded areas. You can see Maradana, they are compact, living in a small area, big number of people. The density is very high. They are the spreading of diseases uh, so heavy. So I think uh, uh, we cannot have that type of development in uh, by considering the future thing. And um, we can uh, develop the rural areas also, rather than uh, you know promoting only urban areas. We are the rural areas uh, with uh, you know that also should understand that should not be conflicted with the wildlife. It should be proper area and develop the settlement uh, with their basic you know facilities. And uh, that type of uh, development is required in the future. I think that's we have to look at. Otherwise. Uh, uh, ad hoc development has to be stopped. So it should be planned development, right? Okay, I think that's... Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Uh, I think we heard a lot we won't hear every day. Like everyone is taught that the problem is the population density and solution is to lessen the population density. So. Uh, Professor Balasuriya, what are your thoughts on this? I think uh, Professor Mahana uh, very appropriately answered that question. Um, he also spoke about an integrated approach uh, in, in his earlier presentation. I think it's very important that uh, uh, when designing, a whole team gets together. It's not only really the planners, the engineers, the architects, the ecologists, the environmentalists, the landscape architects, the doctors, you know, the civic society, I think they should form a team so that the team actually decides um, the way forward, right? And now we, we must talk about post city as well because that is something that is coming up, right? And it's already started. And in the post city, in a way, it is like a glorified gamma, right? It has got all the facilities, hospital, hospital schools, retail, uh, housing, a large park, sports arena, and and uh, even um, uh, play areas and it's an integrated approach, right? So uh, it's a one way where we can see a planned city, a new planned city. So let's hope actually that it will also, and it has provided large uh, central park in the middle with the uh, canals flowing through, lots of pocket parks, you know, it's supposed to be the ideal city of the 2021, uh, 21st century. So uh, we, we are watching, we all are watching eagerly to see how well it will work, whether it will provide um, a, a place for all uh, um, society, whether it's catered for all income groups and not con be confined only to a particular income group, because I think it's very important that all income groups are also integrated in the city. So we watch and see how it goes. But it's a very challenging question that you ask, you know, because the Space is shrinking. Uh, how do we design? You know, we have to um, really uh, uh, take this integrated approach that Professor Mahanama spoke about, right? And uh, of course, we know with the Internet of Things that during the COVID, we all work from home and we are still working from home. The commuting has come to almost zero for most of us, right? So um, the home has become our office now. So uh, we find that. Uh, that is also a new approach where officers will be uh, maybe um, maybe reuse as housing. It is happening in some parts of the world because there's no reason to commute daily to office. It may be just once or twice a week. The risk can happen at home, which is also wonderful because you can balance your family as well so that you are at home for your children, which is also very important to see the generation. gets to see their parents more often, as you would know, some of your parents might be both working. So, and those are some of the benefits that we have seen from COVID, you know, working from home. Their home becomes your office and their office spaces will definitely shrink in the future, I would say. And 
that will provide us more safer housing. It has happened abroad. They're trying to do that. They're trying to integrate uh, officers into housing as well. And also uh, not uh, earmark certain places for only for officers, only for retail, but make it multifunctional so that the city's uh, spaces become alive both during day and night and multifunctional as well. So I think that that is a challenging question. There's no one solution for it. Um, it has to be an integrated approach. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Yes, I think the Port City is a very good example for the space problem. I think that's very good initiative taken by our country. Uh, so moving on to the next question, uh, Tina. Um, yeah, we all, thank you, Matt. We all know with the increase of population, it becomes more difficult to uphold biodiversity. Um, I would like to direct this question firstly to Professor Mahanama. What are your suggestions to solve this uh, problem and what countries have uh, succeeded in this part? I think, uh, as I mentioned, the population uh, of a country is a asset, you know, it's, it's a, when you take, talk about uh, countries like uh, Singapore and uh, India and even China, China had a policy on the one child policy in the past, but they, China, India, they never talk about the population, uh, they are too much population. I mean, this is somehow they happy to have a lot of Indians and Chinese and, you know, Sri Lankan, if you, Singapore, but uh, they need to have a management uh, mechanism. What type of population, how do you feed them? All has to be planned properly, rather than keeping the poverty. And you know, without uh, because uh, I think uh, most of the countries actually uh, never talk about nowadays the too much population, but it's increasing. Increasing uh, is the rather than increasing number is uh, distribution of population. How you distribute those population? Where the population increase should uh, in the come population where this should go live well, you know. That, that, that has to be addressed. So now our, our urban population is not growing, but uh, we don't have a kind of, uh, we understand, uh, uh, we don't have a, if compared to other countries, we don't have much, uh, there's no division called urban and rural, like we are just talking about the urban, but uh, it's kind of a transformation. We have find that uh, Asian cities, especially Sri Lankan cities, uh, there's a core area people are living, then gradually decline to the rural areas. That's how you can spread the population. But uh, even the rural population, they enjoy the same life, like, like uh, you know, life in people are enjoying urban areas. They have the same. Normally, uh, the occupation, what they are doing is different. The agriculture mostly, others are service and service oriented and industry and that type of activity. So if you really uh, plan your settlement to accommodate future population, it's very important. Now, that's why I said that uh, we must have a national spatial plan to identify where the critical and environment, critical, ecologically sensitive areas, identify them and have a plan to control them, you know, have a preserve or have a kind of a mechanism to uh, preserve for various thing. One is the wildlife uh, habitat. Other one is there are some of the areas actually is uh, areas where you get the watershed. So our, we have 103 rivers in the country. They, all these rivers are fed water getting from the, the one central country. That's a blessing for us actually. Can you imagine the Mahavali start from there and uh, goes down up to drink commonly and that's type of natural phenomena, natural things here. So if you want to, if you plan that, those land actually has to be completely preserved rather than encouraging the development of those areas. Then we know where people put, how do you plan? Every age location should say, this, this particular city needs certain population amount number. That has already identified what, what city should be in the future, the number, and uh, you have to plan the population for another 30, for 40 years, maybe 20 years, medium term. So estimate the population and accommodate the particular cities that has to plan. Then how can attract people? 
So we have to have development activities on those areas, otherwise people won't go. Like I can, we can remember, we had planned Trincomalee, so recently did a plan for Trincomalee city region. Um, the one co basic question is attracting people to Trincomalee. Well, what are the things that they can come and work, they are living, you know, that's a, your employment activities, very difficult. Therefore, it has to be planned in such a way to get the people, attract the people to a particular city. Then you know how to balance the distribution population. That has to be, it, you can say 50-50, but there should be a certain way of accommodating people in different locations. That's already done, right? The plans are there, two plans available. So you can look at those plans, national spatial plan, and they identify the corridors. That corridors are the economic corridors. There are various places you can have the preserve the uh, natural environment. And uh, there are certain issues that plan, but still trying hard to get uh, future population accommodated in the not in uh, not just sprawling you know so what happened currently so city is getting larger by encroaching the environment areas and fragmenting the habitats you know where you find land and you just uh, cut the trees and have the buildings that's what we normally do but that practice has to be stopped and identify the number of people living in that area had to be connected to the road network. And there you can have the, if you won't have mobility, you can have it. And uh, otherwise you can, that particular city can support by itself, self-sustaining, but then, you know, depending on the cities. Then you can see the particular cities can specialize that how other countries are planning. Not every city should not specialize everything. Then, you know, good example, Nigambu. If you take Nigambu city, it's a, famous city for fish industry. You can go and see Nigambu is a city. You can get uh, the fish production. So then that city actually provides a lot of fish to the country. So then the population people actually can live around the city, focusing on that economy base. That economy base is very important to understand city development. And that way we can accommodate population. I think that should be a plan. Otherwise it's very difficult. Uh, for us, the plan is there. Only thing plan has to be enforced. That it should be a legal, legally that we enforce. Then uh, that to be managed. We have the two laws in the country. One is the Urban Development Authority law and the uh, Town and Country Planning Ordinance that provide the uh, mechanism how to manage the land. You you can't simply have the buildings. You know, you simply have anything. So that yes, sir the planning procedure you have to develop. Uh, so somehow we have to get those things done. I think uh, so young people, you you have the future because you have a right to question, answer, ask the question as your community because that is in the future is your future, you know. So we are almost now 63, you know. So we know we had a different <laughs> eras we have passed. 1970s, you know, we how do that 1974 after 1977. Now we we have the experience of uh, what happened in the past up to now with our own our own experience. So we know the way things going and what other countries how they are going. So I think uh, it's better to organize your future and uh, uh, it is uh, you all can do that. I mean, uh, be open and uh, don't bias to anything, but uh, I'm not saying, I'm saying you know, don't bias too much on environment, don't bias too much on development. It should be a middle part you understand. Now the Professor Balusi mentioned urban design, design of building, urban design. So, and the planning, actually those are very important. So you can see now another example, we talk about the Singer Raja Forest now recently. So now they, it is the, the, they talk about the land ownership. It's a reservation, this is a private land. So that is strong actually. You have to look at the, the connectivity of that particular in, entire environment, ecosystem. If you look at ecosystem, it cannot be, you know, this my, this government. Now you look at plan to understand that ecosystem uh, you know, boundary. So there's, it has, because Singaraja is the large area now come to the small area now. Similarly, many places like that. So the Colombo city, 
certainly a lot of areas and there were uh, low lying areas. Now you can't find them. So what's the result? Any flood, entire city get underwater because there are no areas to get retained water because that ecosystem service is lost, lost now. So, so that's why I'm saying, uh, so what is available, the land, so you have to have a plan to accommodate that. Then there are various principles you have to understand, carrying capacity of the particular land, whether that land carry so much of population, can provide services, you have to understand. So if not, then you have to go for another alternative. So, so that, uh, that assessment has to be done. I think uh, uh, it is currently being done, only thing that implementation, the, the project, if you take isolate project without getting the whole the picture, then we'll have a problem. So that is the biggest problem we are facing uh, right now. I think that in the future, I think so your, your concern, interest is very important as you, because you are, you, you are coming other after your education, you come to a level of, you know, now it's better because in our time, nobody's there to talk about all those things now we are talking about. You are interested. I think that's I appreciate your involvement and uh, try to get views of the senior people what they have experience and uh, to get some kind of uh, understand and share with these other your friends and even the create the environment the dialogue within the uh, your school. Uh, you know, unbiased. Don't bias to anything. Do get the news, daily news, and whatever reports they discuss those matters. And how do you look at that? You know, then, then the, that dialogue is very important. Then you are aware. So then you can come up and with the, when you're coming to kind, you know, gradually you are getting, you know, mature. So you can uh, implement those things in the future. You, that's what uh, we wanted to we expect from you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes. Sir. So, uh, like you said, uh, population is an asset and it's, uh, it's our responsibility to use it properly. Uh, so for our next question, um, well, I'm going to move on to Himat. Yeah, thank you, Dina. Uh, those are very important points that we think the whole world uh, should come together like this to discuss the problems humanity will be facing as a whole in the future that can threaten wildlife and we think our very own existence. Since this project was put together to educate younger generations to conserve and to preserve our wildlife, we would like to bring this uh, to a close with our final question, addressing all the panel members on what you have, uh, on what advice you have when it comes to upholding biodiversity for the future generations to come. Uh, Professor Virakon, what are your what what is your advice for the future generation? Uh, well, I think uh, I would like to end up with a positive note here. Uh, even though we have lost a lot of our biodiversity and we are having serious issues uh, regarding our environment, we still have uh, a lot to preserve. Uh, if you take city of Colombo, uh, we are a wetland city. Uh, we are one of the 18 wetland cities that have been declared in the world. And you can see the list here. You can see that Sri Lanka is the only wetland city, Ramsa wetland city in whole of South Asia. Uh, so why we have become a wetland city? Because we have so many things that are that that's worth uh, preserving. Uh, still, we have this kind of endangered animals roaming in Colombo uh, near Parliament Lake. You can find otters, fishing cats. These are globally threatened species, but they're still here in Colombo. And if you walk around Colombo, you can see so much diversity. All these birds you can see just in Colombo. Uh, I go for a walk every day in uh, uh, Kimbulawala area, and I see all of these birds every day in the morning. Now, when we talk about planned cities, uh, like I think some of the best planned uh, landscape plans I've seen is, is in, in our region is like countries like South Korea and Japan. Once I went to Japan, uh, they have beautiful landscapes. So they took me on a bird watching trip. I spent about two hours and came out recording maybe 25 to 30 birds. I can see five times more in city of Colombo 
just walking and taking my morning walk. So the point I'm trying to make, we have so much still left, so much to preserve. And, and it is our duty to protect them because we are a small island. Uh, we have a huge population, but if you take no other small island like Sri Lanka has uh, large animals like leopards, elephants, uh, and so on. We have one country where you can show the smallest mammal. This is an Etruscan shoe, uh, the, the largest animal in the world, a blue whale, if you take a boat of Mirissa, and the largest terrestrial, uh, second largest terrestrial mammal, which is the Asian elephant. You can see all of these within a span of four hours. Very few countries can come up with a tagline like that. So this is what we have to preserve. This is our heritage. Uh, and this is why we are one of the 36 biodiversity hotspots of the world. And a biodiversity hotspot is defined by two factors. One is endemic species, species that are only found in that area. And if these are just few numbers I can show you, if you look at our freshwater fish, more than 50% of them are found only here. If you take our reptiles, more than 65% are found only in Sri Lanka. In amphibians, more than 80%. So we have so much biodiversity, but most of them are threatened, threatened with extinction. If you don't act now, a lot of these things will disappear within the next decade or next three or four decades. So that is, I think, the, the, the challenge uh, I think your generation will have to face. We have, uh, in our generation, I think we have made a few mistakes and we have also tried to correct them. So I think what we have to be thinking is how do we plan things better? Now, what you see here is, is a highway like the Southern Expressway or, or uh, the outer circular road. And you can see that they have built uh, a overpass for animals. These are very expensive structures, but you can do away with very simple structures like this, like putting a conduit tube under a road which will allow animals to move without being hit by the vehicles. So I think what we'll have to be thinking is about a paradigm shift. We have to start thinking, how can we do things different? Because we have so much to conserve, so much to protect, so much to be proud about. Uh, yet we have to, if we don't plan properly and if we don't uh, do things properly in the next few decades, we are going to lose much of this. So, uh, but I think uh, we will somehow uh, prevail and we, we, I hope that sanity will prevail and we will come up with ways to develop this nation while retaining this rich biodiversity heritage of the country. I think that is the challenge in front of us and I think we, are, we have the knowledge and we have the people and we have the resources to, to rise up to that challenge. But the question is, uh, when do we do that? We'll have to do it very fast because time is running out on us. Uh, so if we don't act now, it may be too late. And I think that is the message I would like to give you. Uh, you. You are young, you are the future of Sri Lanka. Uh, you have to start thinking uh, on a personal note, as an individual, how can I engage? You can do a few things. You can change the way you use water. You can change the way you use electricity, you can start at home to uh, be a part of this uh, change. And if you have more time, you can develop organizations. Now, I think you have a number of societies. Uh, I was, uh, I had my education at Royal College. Where I have been part of uh, these uh, societies. And as societies, you can do more like what you're doing now trying to create awareness and try to engage in this process. And what is most important is in another few years, you will be taking decisions about this country. So when you take decisions about this country, please be mindful about these animals because they can't talk. They cannot be holding boards and say, I need my forest. If we don't act, they will lose their homes and they will disappear and we will lose this rich biodiversity we have. So that is the message I have for you. And I hope you will uh, rise up to this challenge and make this country a desirable place to live in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir, so much to learn. There are so many lessons for the younger generation. 
Uh, we would like to move on to Professor Mahanama. What is your advice? I think uh, what uh, I endorse, uh, Professor Devak has mentioned, because uh, as his uh, expertise and the knowledge, uh, he has given a lot of uh, information and the, the knowledge and experience, uh, you know, I think uh, it's very balanced way of his thinking. It's not uh, biased to, that's what we want, that type of uh, the person is because uh, see, you understand, they are all models, you can understand. Uh, because uh, I know the nature is the first thing we have to consider, whatever. So the other things, uh, development uh, coming on the naturally given the environment. So you should be able to separate, understand the, the functions and you know all these uh, services, which are important people to live, human. So as he mentioned, the animal can't talk and I mean, they can't do anything, just, just what they, they ran away. You know, ran away means they are try to, with their capacity, they try to be resilient and they go and destroy the whole other things. And uh, and uh, so we all saw that in the TV and show, like it's, a, it's again the political dialogue. We have to very carefully understand what the, what this part is and everybody is saying on this, with a different note. But I, for you actually, but I'm saying that you are young, young generation, you have shown the interest and uh, so my advice is uh, you can get the knowledge, proper knowledge, you know, and learn because while we talk about a few minutes, and, but you can learn a lot of things from the internet and there are various uh, reading. And uh, good, every profession has a certain uh, important, you know, to get your, develop your knowledge. Say the biologist, zoologist, and I know that when I work with the team of the people, I didn't know that uh, the zoology part, but uh, when they explained uh, how this uh, behavior of the you know various animals, so we cannot deny. Then they have what they were. They are technically and they are scientifically proved that this is very important. So then we have to accept it. So then we next question we asked that what is the why, how they are living survival. So we know that there are limitations. So then we know that uh, you know that type of uh, inquiring mind is very important. To accept certain things and uh, understand, be open and uh, face your challenge. Because young, <clears throat> if you say something, they are the people with something uh, with the knowledge, you know, with the points you have to then people ready to accept it. And uh, you have a lot of time. And uh, as we are young, and when you come to a natural level, so when you finish your education, you come to the positions, whatever way either doctor, engineer, or a planner, or the biologist, doesn't matter. So you have to understand uh, that's something to be uh, protect, preserve for the next generation, but to understand that taste and difference will be different, but the, make sure whatever the say requirement of the people, even though your requirement, my requirement has to be accommodated with that limitations. So I think uh, you have to learn for that. I think you will have a capacity, I hope that you can do. Uh, with that, I think uh, I wish you all the best for the future to promote this further and have more discussion. There are other, other, other professionals who can talk to on this matter. So we'll have the different dialogues and uh, keep awareness with other young, other fellow members and get their uh, educated and uh, go forward. I think a lot of challenge, I know it's not easy task because uh, our, you are different, the people's the taste and preference are different. They want certain things quickly. Some people, you know, but I'm saying that we promote certain things. For example, if you promote solar energy, it's a good example, but it's a big problem in the country. You know, we cannot provide, we cannot manage it. It's very difficult. People are facing a lot of issues. You know, we all, one time we talk about the electric cars. So there is no government so supporting electric cars. The people who bought electric cars are now in a big problem to harm the, the bakers. So, you know, these are the things that, uh, you know, when you we think that's good, but later on it become a burden for the people. So therefore your future has all these challenges. 
I think you can uh, organize yourself with your team up and uh, do something. With it. Thank you very much for your. Thank you, sir. That was marvelous uh, to hear. That was some very good uh, lessons for all of us. Uh, Professor Sh uh, Sh Shirani, what are your, what's your simple advice for younger generation? I think uh, uh, Professor Devaka and Professor Mahana have given you good advice. And um, I'm really delighted that youth are taking so much of interest. And we have a good example in Rita Thumbert, you know, 15 year old, trying to change the world. And I like to quote Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And um, I think today we got um, uh, all the information on the internet. As you know, uh, Bhutan is a wonderful country that you can get inspired from. Uh, it's got carbon neutral. It's uh, very strict in their laws to protect biodiversity. So uh, there are so many examples like that around the world that you can actually follow. But I think I'm very hopeful because I think you see many um, social media posts about the young people being so concerned about the forest and the, their concerns are always voiced. And uh, I think all three of us are very hopeful that uh, Sri Lanka is in good hands with the youth of Sri Lanka. Okay, so all the very best. And thank you very much again for having us on this like-minded panel. And um, we all have faith in the next generation. So educate yourself and also have a lot of awareness in schools programs because I think it's important to educate your younger brothers and sisters as well. And I think awareness even in civic society is important because I think a lot of the people are quite ignorant. That is why they make these horrible mistakes. So I think it's important to be um, educated and uh, be aware of all the benefits of biodiversity and the natural environment. So all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, to conclude with today's proceedings, I would like to invite Dinath. Um, yes, thank you, Himat. As all good things must come to an end, we would like to conclude this discussion. And we hope that we raise awareness to all the students who are the future generation that will enjoy the resources and benefits of our planet. We, and we hope to make a better future for everyone here on Earth and in Sri Lanka. Once again, I would like to thank our guests for taking the time off of their busy schedules and taking part in our discussion. It was an absolute pleasure and honor having you all with us, each and every one of you. Um, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and have a pleasant evening.